coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Skydio begins delivery of small UAV to defense customers. True Simulation shows off new Varus VR flight simulator. And FAA authorizes Academy of Model Aeronautics events. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Skydio begins delivery of small UAV to defense customers. Skydio announced that customers have begun receiving the first of its X-10D, its flagship defense and government drone. The announcement follows the successful rollout of the older X-2D, which has seen thousands of systems delivered across the U.S. and its allies around the world. Taking hard-won lessons from back east, the X-10D ships with a dynamic channel switching system to constantly maintain a clear comms frequency during flight, ideally allowing troops to remain in contact with the X-10D even in contested, electromagnetically messy environments. The battle space of Eastern Europe has taught many lessons to those willing to pay attention, and Skydio seems to be a pretty good student. The X-10D offers clients a small, compact, and offline-ready iteration of the firm's trustworthy X-10 UAV, blending the proven little drone with improved ISR capabilities and offline performance that allows it to continue the mission even without an operator guiding it every step of the way. The autonomous drone can navigate, spectate, scry, and return even without a consistent command and control signal. Skydio's inclusion of their autonomy platform and night sense make the X-10D, quote, the first SUAS capable of 24-7 operations, end quote, thanks to its obstacle avoidance, thermal vision, and baseline intelligence. And after the break, Helicopter Association International, now Vertical Aviation International. For 15 years, the Aero News Network has provided live coverage of the annual Aircraft Electronics Association Convention and Trade Show, and we are pleased to do so again this year. Join us March 19th at 8.30 a.m. Central for the AEA opening session and exciting new product introductions, and then again on March 20th and 21st for in-depth interviews with the newsmakers in the avionics industry, live from the exhibit hall floor at airborne-live.net. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Helicopter Association International, now Vertical Aviation International. The helicopter industry is calling dibs on the upcoming boom in EVTOL aircraft, with the long-standing stakeholder group Helicopter Association International, usually HAI, changing its name to the more broadly incorporative Vertical Aviation International, or VAI. The change keeps them on the cutting edge of the rapidly evolving vertical flight ecosystem, guarding valuable market share before eVTOL operators have a chance to head off on their own to build an entirely new clubhouse. The blimps are back in town. 
Twin-hulled airships made by UK Concern Hybrid Air Vehicles Limited have entered the type certification process over in Britain, paving the way for passenger and cargo service in the near future. The firm is certifying the Airlander 10, the quote, world's most efficient large aircraft, end quote, with their local regulator, the UK Civil Aviation Authority. Once type certified, it will likely see reciprocity with the FAA stateside, though the firm doesn't exactly come out and promise so. Greater Orlando Aviation Authority and Embry-Riddle look to AAM. Researchers from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University tell us that they are conducting a systematic evaluation of the impact of advanced air mobility vehicles, such as air taxis and autonomous air delivery aircraft, on airport operations at Orlando International Airport. The project, which uses advanced simulation modeling, is a collaboration between the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority, which operates and manages Orlando International Airport, Embry-Riddle's College of Aviation, and the university's Center for Aerospace Resilient Systems. General Atomics makes the most of 3D printing. General Atomics successfully demonstrated an ordnance drop using its advanced air-launched effects platform, releasing it from the internal arms bay of an MQ-20 Avenger. The test took place over Utah's Dugway Proving Ground. For the air-launch design, GAASI made the most of their newfangled divergent adaptive production system. It's best seen as a higher-end, sufficiently advanced version of the kind of processes 3D printing aficionados enjoy at home. Well, that was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. True Simulation shows off new Varus VR Flight Simulator. Textron's Bell Flight Training Academy will be using a brand new type of virtual reality flight simulator at their flagship location with a brand new Varus VR Flight Sim. The unit was recently shown off at the HAI Heli Expo 2024, offering clients a clean sheet design that combines a traditional full motion experience with visual augmentation to make it feel even more like the real thing. Bell Training Academy will be the launch customer for the type and begin using the simulator on the Bell 505 later this year. The Varus features six degrees of freedom about its motion base, with True's real field control loading system garnering its status as a level 7 FAA flight training device and as an EASA level 3 standard sim. Certification for both entities is currently underway, further adding value for clients when they can log time in it. Its controls are largely analogous to level D full flight sims, with tactical cockpit panels providing all the same switches and avionics expected on a real aircraft. The virtual reality component is found in the headset, which replaces the views outside the windows while blending the flight deck into a cohesive flying experience. After these messages, FAA authorizes Academy of Model Aeronautics events. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. FAA authorizes Academy of Model Aeronautics events. After much ado, concerns about event sanctions held by model aircraft groups associated with the Academy of Model Aeronautics have been put to rest. Under authorization, the FAA grants AMA members the ability to operate without broadcasting remote ID information at AMA-sanctioned events. 
It's great news for the group, who has been operating with trepidation since a 2021 final rule made it seem like they wouldn't have a pathway to comply. Not all lightweight little model planes have the space, aerodynamics, or power to drive a remote ID module, but without authorization, they would be effectively grounded for large events. Since the 2021 rule regarding remote ID was published, the Academy of Model Aeronautics has been advocating for a streamlined FAA process to exempt operations at their appropriately sanctioned events. Under this system, contest directors and event managers of these sanctioned events will be required to issue a notum for their event at least 24 hours in advance. The news helps kick off 2024 for AMA members, and a busy year it's shaping up to be. Surging interest in drones, racing, and model aircraft building means that the AMA has plenty to file over the next seven months. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.